This is my, my Max Headroom. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever produced in the history of t t television. And there's more. Because you are going to see it as well. And thanks for hanging out with us on Facts of Frauds. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, you're subscribed, and ring that bell for notifications so the next time premiere video you can hit a live chat with everyone else and leave a comment in the comment section tell me what you think. Alright friends, there's a lot of misinformation out on the internet. We all know this. We run into it every day, right? Well, imagine this. They're teaching people not to pay child support. So, sit back relax and enjoy Is child support taking your money they used to take mine too until i file alpha davids alpha davids wait a minute what does an alien from space have to do with court objection took them to court got a court hearing and got relief and i got my case dismissed for fraud against the county of los angeles i represented myself and how did I do it? I found these Alpha Davids. Huh? Objection! Here we go again with these Alpha Davids. Listen, Alpha has nothing to do with your child support case. And neither does David. Only you. At Alpha Davids, all you gotta do is just download them. Fill in the blank, do it yourself. Dad Eve, what are you getting for your $10? What do we get for $10? Everything you want. What are you getting for your $10? Getting for your $10? You getting over 20 alpha davids and instructions on what to do how to file my name is lionel tillman as you can see on the screen this is from the united states code subsection uh, 581 united states trustee let's stroll up a little bit now look before he goes too far into the weeds let me make something very clear here that Title 28 that he's quoting from is that portion of the United States Code that governs the federal judicial system. And this United States trustee program that's being talked about is a component, component of the Department of Justice that seeks to promote the efficiency and protect the integrity of the federal bankruptcy system. This has absolutely nothing to do with child support. This has to do with federal bankruptcy uh, rules and regulations. So uh, I guess these people, they see the word trustee, they've been told that it has some kind of magical meaning, I guess, but it has no meaning to what he's talking about right here. Federal government doesn't even get involved in uh, child support enforcement. That's a state issue. So this is totally stupid, which uh, I guess can only be expected. By the way, there, there is a couple of criminal sanctions for uh, uh, people who are, uh, haven't been paying their child support for a number of years, and it reaches a certain dollar value. But that's not what we're discussing here. So this is just as worthless. What he's about to say is just as worthless as those Alpha Davids. Okay, it says the Attorney General shall appoint one United States trustee for each of the following regions composed of the Federal Judicial District without regards to Section 451. So since I'm doing the state of Virginia, it has all the states in here in this subsection about every state Attorney General appoints a trustee. But since I'm doing the state of Virginia, and that's, that's the state that I had had beat so i'm gonna continue to focus on that state so let's go to virginia it's in it's in uh number four of section a four the judicial district established for the states of maryland north carolina south carolina virginia and west virginia and for the district of columbia all these areas are basically in the tri-state but you got dc maryland and virginia that's the tri-state for this area but then you have also added is North Carolina and South Carolina. So with that being said, you know, it's basically telling you guys that you have the 
you know, the attorney general who most guys go against with in child support appoints the trustee. But with that being said, guys, you guys got to learn how to appoint the trustee yourself. So let's go to the Virginia Constitution. As you can see, this is the, the Virginia Bill of Rights coming from the Constitution. And as you can see, let's stroll up. Let's go to Section 2. Section 2 uh, states, uh, people, the source of power, that all power is vested in, and consequently derived from, the people, that magistrates are their trustees and servants, and at all times amendable to them. Okay, there's that tricky word again, uh, trustee, but the Constitution being a uh, political document, the people of Virginia are just recognizing that uh, the people have all the power and they entrust the people they elect to uh, look out for their welfare, do what's best for them, not to break the law. So in that effect, your elected representatives are trustees of your trust that you put into them when you vote for them. It's, a, it's really kind of called the trustee model of representation which is kind of a model of representative democracy. And in, in this particular model, constituents elect the representatives as trustees for their constituency. So that's how this word is being used. They, they think for some reason, I guess, that a trustee only has a fiduciary responsibility to control your assets and to, to control the, your, your life or something like that. I have no idea. But the... Uh, the judge here, I think, does a good job. So uh, enjoy the rest of the video. So with that being said, guys, if the, if the magistrate is your trustee and they're your servant, who does, who does that make you? Or what does that make you? It make you their master. So you should be able to, uh, you know, don't let them tell you what to do. You should be able to point to them and tell them what you want them to do. They work for you, not you work for them. It is incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. Uh, uh, or something. Yeah, my thanks to Juan Galt for helping trying to make sense of this Alpha David Duda that the gurus are selling. Good luck with that, really. You big cold-blooded dummy. All right, so... Okay, Mr. Howard, you want to have a seat up here? I'm going to sign a contract if I go up here. Mr. Bro Mr. Howard, um, all right, so this is in the matter of Katie Suzanne Howard versus Daryl LeVon Howard Jr., file number 19 46860DM. Mr. Howard, I'd like you to sit at the defense table and Mr. Bruggeman and whatever witness you might have, Mr. Howard, there is no contract by entering the courtroom. A basic understanding of the law um, would dictate that there's no contract by having the seat being seated. I know that you're Daryl Howard. I've had jurisdiction. Right, and that I've had jurisdiction over you before because you had a case for a felony child support case as um, well as appearing before. So um, this is the date and time set for hearing <clears throat> in this matter. Mr. Brugman, um, Katie Howard is in my waiting room. Is she going to be a witness today? No, is this a show cause for failure to pay? Um, no, this is a bench trial. Yeah, I'm, yeah, show cause bench trial for failure to pay. Yes. Yeah, no, I'm just, I have the present for it. Okay. Any objection to Ms. Howard dealing? No, she certainly. Okay. Are you calling Katie Howard as um, a witness? Yeah, I can. Yes. Yeah. Yes? Okay. So. Um, hold, on, hold on. Ms. Howard, um, I just wanted to let you know we're here. We're going to start the hearing. Um, now, if Mr. Howard's calling her as a witness, should I sequester her by putting her in the waiting? No, fine. She can. Mr. Howard, do you yeah. want me to sequester her? She is a party to this, but do you want me to put her in the waiting room until you call her? Yes. Okay. So, Ms. Howard, I'm going to pop you in the waiting room, all right? Okay. All right, so um, this is the date and time for a show cause bench trial. In this matter, um, Mr. Bregman, are you ready to proceed? I am here. Mr. Howard, are you ready to proceed, yes or no? 
No, I was gonna, I had one thing I wanted to make sure. The, sure. the original contract that she signed, that she signed up for, I wasn't a part of. Um, so is that what happened to There you? is no contract in the birth of a child in support of the child. So thank you. Mr. Bregman, are you ready to proceed? I am, Your Honor. All right, may I call your first witness? Let's call Mr. Bosco. Mr. Bosco, please. Mr. Bosco, you want to step up here, please? <clears throat> Mr. Vasquez, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, have a seat, please. Can you state your full name for the record, please? Jay Vasquez. And you are employed by? Front of the court. Okay, very good. Mr. Bregman? Sure. Mr. Vasquez, could you state your position with the front of the court? Uh, enforcement officer. In that capacity, do you have access to the defendant's files and records? I do. Is there a order to pay child support? Yes, sir. What does that order state? Mr. Howard is ordered to pay $151 a month. And he is currently behind the amount of $8,298. That's a arrearage as of what, what date? Today. And when was the last time we received a payment? He made a $1 payment on October 26th. Of this year? Correct. And when was the last payment before that? December of 2021. And how much was that? $14.38. So since December of 2021, he's made a total of about $15 in payments? Correct. And how long has this order been in place? The original order was entered October of 2019. And judgment divorce uh, order that support remains the same. That was March of 2020. No further questions, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Um, Howard, <clears throat> do you have any questions for Mr. Messi? Yeah. <clears throat> um, when was the last time you had uh, conversations uh, with uh, Mr. Howard, the, uh, the defendant? When was the last time you inquired about the ability to pay? That's not the other part of the courts. Job too. Are you were, were you the are you the uh, the uh, caseworker for uh, the defendant? Yes, I am. So, when was the last time you and the defendant spoke to each other? I, on this case, I'm not sure. I don't know if we ever have on this case. Now, originally on this case. The defendant, uh, when you when you had the uh, order signed, is that the same day that he was taken in incarceration? I have no knowledge of him. So October, do, okay. So let's go to uh, October first, two thousand nineteen. Is that correct? The original order was entered October twenty eighth of two thousand nineteen. Okay, and you were served July of twenty eighteen. This order. So on, so on October the 1st, because he was incarcerated from, for four days, on that day, recollection shows that the defendant and- well, Mr. Howard, can I first inquire, why were you incarcerated? For, for a failure. For a failure for the uh, case uh, was, uh, was there for- The felony child support case? Was there taking care of okay. this- so he's not- he didn't deal with a felony case, so right. But I'm speaking in okay. Well, in regards to this case, on that same day, the two officers there that was the time that this was supposedly signed to be a child support order. I signed the child support, not me. Okay, well, during that time period, there, there seems to be a mistake. Of fact, okay, all right. I have no follow up questions for Mr. Ross, but have a seat. Any other witnesses? I have no further witnesses, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Mr. <coughs> Howard, so do you wish to call any witnesses? Um, uh, Mrs. Howard. Okay. Stand up. You can stand at the podium. All right. And then she's going to be up there. And I swear in. Ms. Howard, can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Can you state your full name for the record, please? Katie Suzanne Howard. Very good. Mr. Howard. Okay. Um, at the time when you 
Um, at the time of conception, were you married? Of what session of the? Of the child. So, Mr. Howard, the only issue we're really here on and we need to focus on is the child support and failure to pay. Correct. But if the child is going on the wedlock, then we have to figure out a different scenario because the, all no, that's not true. Make a difference if she was married to you, married that to somebody was. else, or not married at all. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. Okay. So, The information, okay. <clears throat> Underneath uh, Michigan Con Law 700.7901, there's remedies for a breach. Violation of the trustee, of all the trustee to the beneficiary, which is Mr. Howard, is not a breach. It's compelled the trustee to perform trustee duties and join the trustees to be the breach of the trust. Order the trustee to account, appoint a special fiduciary to take uh, possession of the trust property and administer the trust. Um, so with that being said, with my uh, living trust, because this estate. So you have an estate, a living trust where you're receiving it, income from? No, no, this, this, this estate that we are administering right now, Mr. The Howard. The estate is a guardian, it's involved in an, um, probate court. So that means you have an inheritance in an estate? Okay, well, this is the problem. The person that the, the, the Mr. Howard, you are referring to different from the one in the living trust. Living trust, you have seen human beneficiaries uh, that are inside of the living trust. So there's can, a problem. Can you define trust for me, Mr. Howard? Okay. Well, a trust is an inheritance. Yes. Or money that's set aside for people to inherit yes. or be given. So do you have that money? My beneficiaries are in the trust. I have that. Inside of my living trust, my beneficiaries, we have we, oh, that's the problem inside of this trust. court. Okay, my children are in here. My children are inside my living trust. It doesn't apply to this. Still, I mean, you, you can. It's simply the law, Mr. Howard. I know, I'm, and it's a law that I can invoke the DCB to have parental, parental immunity as well. There is no such thing as parental immunity. From the U.S. Department of Civil Rights, 2016, Dear Colleague letter explains things a little bit different. I'm sorry, what letter? 2016, Dear Colleague letter. Dear Colleague letter? Yeah, eight pages. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions for Ms. Howard? Was there ever an agreement to not have child support? No, there was not. You, you're under oath. She's answered your question, so. Do you have any other questions for Ms. Howard? Um, no. Mr. Bregman, do you have any questions for Ms. Howard? I have no questions for Ms. Howard. So. Okay. All right, Ms. Howard, um, you can go ahead and meet yourself. And, um, all right. So, Mr. Howard, um, is there, um, we have closing arguments you can make. Or you can make a statement and allow Mr. Bruggerman to cross-examine you. So which would you like to do? Do you wish to testify? Do you wish to testify? No, but I would. Okay. So do you wish to make a closing statement? Then? Sorry. So you don't wish to testify today? No? Okay. Mr. Bruggerman, do you have a closing statement? We're going to rely on the testimony of Mr. Prosser, All right. Mr. Howard, do you have a closing statement? Um, I have personal identification, personal identification that I want to be uh, redacted. I have a long form fiduciary form that I want it to be done. And I also have a sworn uh, supervised administration uh, of a trust that I want to get taken care of. But uh, as far as the Ability to pay. I haven't had in the last three and a half years. I've had a possible charge. Um, I have denials right here from different companies that wouldn't do it because of my uh, because of the background charge. I had a possible felony at the time. So for almost four years now, I've been denied. And in the last month, 
two months. I had uh, I just got a job there with the uh, Great Lakes Security, so I worked a couple times with them, and they have child support to take the money out of the check that uh, just happened uh, when I worked. I believe it was the last month when I had one last time there, but. Uh, they're trying to get me in rotation in the schedule there, so I'm trying to get my uh, after being taken to charge. Um, now I'm able to, without nothing pending, I could probably get to do more. Um, but up to that point, though, it was just impossible to pay, and the impossibility to pay, I invoke that in Michigan. This deal. What's the basis of the impossibility to pay? I've had background checks where I couldn't pass for three or almost four years. Anything else, Mr. Farmer? Um, I would just state that Mr. Howard could go down to the front of the court and um, ask for a referee hearing to have those child support uh, amounts adjusted based on his job or lack of job or not being able to get a job. And until he does that, it's impossible for, it's impossible for Mr. Brasquez to do anything but process the order that's in place. So Mr. Howard could go down to the president court and go through the procedure, but until that happens, we are dealing with that order that is in place and enforcing the order that's in place. I have, I have, I have children I look after every day. Like I, Say that again. Outside of this coming to court, because I come here probably twice a month for the last <laughs> three years, and like I'm really trying to be outside of it so I can maintain what I'm doing at home. We got to pay your child support, up. and then you don't have to come to court. It's very simple. I have thousands of people that pay their child support and don't come to my court. All right. So it's finding of the court that Mr. Howard is guilty of failure to pay child support. His arrearage in excess of, eight, well, as of today's date, $8,148.31. He has a de minimis charge of $151. I don't find the fact that he had a felony charge um, is a good enough reason that he can't pay child support because I have tons of felons on probation who hold full-time jobs. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Howard, a lot of the information you provided does not um, apply to the civil court system. It, you're using language from the probate court that do not apply. So I do find that you're guilty of failure to pay child support, sent to the court will serve 14 days in the Lenway County Jail, you can be released upon the payment of $2,000. This, like, makes me want to go to jail. <laughs> and thanks for hanging out with us on Facts or Frauds. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button. You're subscribed. And ring that bell for notifications so the next time I premiere a video, you can be in the live chat with everyone else. And leave a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. And a huge thank you to our channel members, Robert Morley, Bandon, and D. Chris Kellen, Goddess Truth, Crandall Less Rage, Pedro Bacamole, Archangel Asriel, AZG Girl, Sean Oldfart, Pat's Cats, and Barefoot Mike, and Nelly the Irish Wolfhound. Juanish, thank you. If you'd like to become a member, just click on the link in the description, or click on join right next to subscribe. And if you're still hanging around, why not hit that subscribe button? Yeah, you might like it. Hit the thumbs up. And hit the thanks button if you'd like to support the channel. Until next time, Buonishi. Thank you. I'll see you soon.